Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing fine. So um, I have just received a very typical question, which relates to how so-called profitability cases can be solved in a really outstanding manner. There are lots of misconceptions and really straight out wrong advice that is given by countless experts out there. So I wanted to share something with you that you will not find in the typical case preparation books, which have essentially all been written by people who were never trained as real interviewers at MBB firms. So here is the question which I received. The question is, how can I analyze profitability cases in an outstanding way? As it is suggested by Victor Cheng, I usually start with asking questions about whether it is a company-specific or a market-wide issue. But I struggle to then properly cut through the deeper analysis levels. If it is a market problem, should I then do an analysis of the market? Should this then already be part of my initial structure? When practicing such cases, I oftentimes get lost and confused. After some time, I just get stuck. So how can I avoid this and approach profitability cases in a bulletproof way? All right, so I think this will take some time. <laughs> um, given the underlying premises of this question and the many inaccuracies that have been spread around by case preparation books over the last decade, um, I think I need to explain a couple of absolutely crucial points here. So, in fact, the described initial approach corresponds exactly to what is outlined in the usual case preparation books, YouTube videos and so on. Now, all of these have been created by authors who have been still very junior when they left consulting, or did not even work in consulting in some cases. But as a matter of fact, this approach is not how a real consultant should tackle such questions, at least not in MBB. So firstly, the term profitability case is complete nonsense. Now, Please listen to the sentence again and let it sink in. The term profitability case is nonsense. This is super important to understand because practically the entire case preparation literature is teaching this crap. So what we are actually looking at here is a certain class of strategic problems that can be called diagnostic situation. And it can comprise any observed phenomenon. So a decrease in profit is just one out of hundreds of possible variations. All of these problems can and should be attacked by the same core logic. Before you delve into rather qualitative and contextual analysis, such as, for example, understanding whether it's an industry phenomenon, you should always first isolate the logical or numerical driver of the problem. This means that you have to turn around your approach. First, you do a numerical analysis to understand what is mathematically driving the profit decline. Once you have isolated this problem driver, then you can do a qualitative analysis to understand the underlying reasons for the negative development of this specific driver. If you don't do it like this and stick to what is recommended in the typical books, then you will always be extremely inefficient in your analysis, since this approach is essentially the very definition of boiling the ocean, if you know that phrase. So first, narrow down what is actually the precise area which you have to understand in detail, and only then try to actually understand it in detail. 
in this concrete case example um, that was mentioned, knowing whether it's an industry problem or not is more or less useless at the start. This information has literally zero impact on your first layer of analysis if you do it rigorously. So first, you have to understand what is numerically causing the problem. Only once you have found out this problem driver, then investigating on whether competitors, for example, have the same problem is effective and helpful. Because now you can already know what the re root cause is, or you already know what the root cause is, and this means you now just need to find out why this root cause has emerged. So, as a rough outline, you must take three steps. Firstly, you need to uh, identify the numerical driver of the yeah, below benchmark profits of the company. Right? This is what you could call the what question. You identify the different income streams of the company, then for each income stream you use a driver tree to find and isolate the core of the problem. So, how does each figure differ from last year, for example? So, do we have less customers? Do we have uh, less revenue per customer? Have we sold more low-margin products? Uh, have, do we have lower pricing, uh, higher operational costs, and so on and so forth, right? If you find a driver that has developed in an unfavorable direction, then you need to dig deeper to isolate the sub-driver which is responsible for this negative performance. And this is what you then call the numerical problem driver. Then, once you found the numerical problem driver, then step two is you need to understand the why question. So why has this problem driver developed negatively? So for this, the analysis um, well, depends on what the actual problem driver is, for example, uh, of, of course, right? So, um, if uh, it is a cost problem, then you may want to go through the entire value chain to diagnose where the difference or disadvantage lies. If it is a revenue or sales mix problem, then uh, you may want to scrutinize the underlying trends and developments, uh, competing offers, substitutes, and so on. Based on your quantitative analysis, the what question, and your qualitative analysis, the why question, you can then, in the third step, develop concrete ideas on specific strategic measures to address these qualitative reasons that you have identified. Now, this is, in general, how such problems are typically structured and tackled in top strategy consulting. You never start with qualitative questions. It is the most inefficient approach thinkable. First, narrow down and isolate the sub-area that logically causes the problem or mathematically causes the problem. This is the quantitative analysis. And then start asking qualitative questions to understand the underlying reasons for this numerical problem that emerged. So, I hope this was helpful. Cheers.